What's up guys, quick update on Bitcoin. It's been a while since we made a video. We're gonna look at a lot of different stuff. You know, I still think that this is a one, two here guys from this point and that we're doing this and we're getting ready to go up. That volume hasn't come in yet. We did have some short term volatility because of the, uh, the FOMC meeting. That happens a lot of time. It just went up and down, right? Um, I already drew up these high to low 618s. We're kind of at the 50 right now of this point. Um, you know, I still think we're going up. Um, not much else to see here on the weekly. The three day is, uh, we are at the low to high 618 area though, right here. Right, dropped 618. So we are at massive support on the three day. Yeah, the three day is about a cross up too on the moving average. I'm not sure if you guys, guys could see it, but this is about a cross up. You know, in the past two moves up, it's been a, either a leading indicator or a lagging indicator. On this move up, it was kind of like a lagging. It was a leading indicator. On this cross up, it was kind of like a lagging indicator, right? Um, so we are about to cross up on the three day. If you look at some other time frames real quick on the high time frames, five day. I think the two day has already crossed up. At this point right here, the last two times that's happened was a pretty nice leading indicator for a large move up. And the squeezes are getting pretty tight on these high time frames. So two day, three day, you know, four day is the tightest it's pretty much ever been. And we are at massive support, trend line plus the uh, key moving averages, right? So pretty much that volatility is, uh, or that big move is about to come. Most likely it's going to correlate with us going up as a as the volume gets uh volume starts coming in right so that's one thing we're still kind of waiting for um so that was on the three day i think the daily you know i could tell you that we are at massive PO support poc and the squeeze is tight and I already pointed out that we are kind of at a that was on the three day we're kind of at support right so i think on the little medium time frame here you know we just had this volatility because of the fomc meeting um, you know, is this corrective? I think it is. Like, if you were to ask me what this count is, right, I would say that this is still a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? It's probably like a 3, 3, 5 or something like that into a fifth. You know, this is kind of stretching for an ABC. It doesn't really look right, to be honest. Um, we kind of have to look at the the volume right we're way past the one-to-one -one extension for it to have kind of the light or the right look right so if you get rid of all that and you just look at the volume down here you know we this this move down here did happen on a little bit lower volume but it, it just it starts looking a little weird when this becomes too lengthy you know but my original count was that we were looking for like an a b c like that right but we kind of went, uh, we went up and then we went back down. Now we're going back down, right? So very tricky right now. I think we could look at some on-chain stuff to kind of try to figure out what's going on here, right? Um, but if we just, you know, a lot of times I like to look at the weekly when we get something tricky like this, right? So I think on the weekly, it kind of it kind of makes more sense, right? Because if you were to do the fib time extension from this point to that point, we're a little bit closer to the one to one. So this could it, it looks a little bit more right on like the weekly for this to just be a one two like that, right? And to just look at the higher time frames and not like overcomplicate things. You know, this is still my A count right here. That this is a one two, and this, you know, that that right there looks like an inverse head and shoulders pattern as well, right? Right there. So still looks like an accumulation pattern, guys. I think we just have to be accumula uh, have to be a little patient here. I think that's pretty much it for Bitcoin. Still the same count. We want to kind of stop focusing on lower time frames, you know, and just look at the bigger picture, guys. Right? There is still a lot of liquidity down to like 64k. And then we have a lot of liquidity up above as well, right? So we're going to go down and pick that liquidity up real quick. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. So yeah, the higher liquidity is definitely above 70K though right now. This is kind of interesting. On this thing, it's showing that there is more liquidity going down to like 64K than there is going up on this uh, website, coinglass.com. So that's pretty much it for Bitcoin. Let's just look at some on-chain stuff. 
right we're five minutes in you know we back tested a wick off this purple uh golden ratio multiplier right and we really respect it off it that's a good sign the funding is kind of going down as the open interest is going up it's kind of interesting um the volume is kind of starting to invert right it broke out of like this trend line here and now this is looking like a wedge right so you know a big move is coming the last time last two times this has happened it's correlated with the uh, two big moves going up right if you just look back right here at this point when with volume started inverted we had a huge rip up right so still kind of what I think is going on as we're kind of finishing up deleveraging we just had a double cross here this could go either way most likely I think it's going to go up um, the RSI is kind of re-entering a bullish momentum here, right? This kind of looks like a corrective pattern of some sorts like that. And the uh, funding MA is starting to go down uh, the, on the bit, uh, Bitcoin prediction price model, right? It's just a bullish signal. The price is going up. So, you know, it's kind of interesting that we looked at that real quick. And then I think we could look at some... I think we'll look at all coins later, like Dogecoin, and just look at uh, some of these uh, on-chain metrics. I think we may just look at every time from from now on to keep an eye on this stuff, right? We're kind of we're kind of waiting for this trend line touch, which we didn't get yet, but we we have been going down, trending down or up like that, which has been historically close to a top indicator when this thing starts inverting. But this is a little weird and with it that we didn't get to that trend line point yet, right? Um, when this thing kind of starts inverting, it's usually, it's pretty close to a top. I think what we're looking for here, guys, though, is uh, it's probably another wedge finish. I think we are going to see another wedge finish. So I think that maybe we might see it on like three day or something. Where this is like... Uh, a b c d e like that or something right so it's like that maybe we get something like that that's kind of what i'm expecting right now guys so let's see if something like that happens um so yeah we looked at this real quick it's kind of an interesting signal this is something that's very bullish guys is that uh one week on chain uh the hash rate drop is very low right now you know, when this thing hits a bottom point, it's a very bullish signal as it starts to invert, right? Um, as these points right here, right? When this thing bottoms out, it's a very bullish signal. And we're kind of getting close there. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, we're getting close to a, like, buy the dip thing. Whenever this thing bottoms, whenever this correction ends, right? You know, the question is how low is it going to go, but this is pretty much like a buy the dip scenario, right? As this goes down like that, right? Like that. So, as this thing inverts, it's going to be a very bullish signal, guys. Um, and I think we're getting close, so I think we just need to hold on here, right? So, this is a hash rate drop. Uh, this is another thing I have up, which is a N uh, NVT signal. Right, so if you go here and look at this thing, we're kind of waiting for this bottom trend line to kind of break, right, before we could say there's some kind of correction. Um, right now, this just looks like a double bottom, and I think that this thing could go like much higher, right? It's kind of what we're expecting. But when we break this trend line, it's a pretty like bullish, bullish signal, like we had here, right? So this time we did go back to the top of the range and it's kind of getting a little overextended. The question is, you know, are we going to do something like this and then go higher? See, the, the, the thing is right now we haven't seen that volume come. But we could definitely see something like that, right? Which, In which case this thing ran up like midway right here, right? It's kind of what it looks like and then it went, went up. So we got to just drop these trend lines like that and see if they hold, right? We might get a little fake out, but as we continue up, this little thing is kind of crossing down, but it looks like it's going to cross back up or something. 
I think we need to keep an eye on that top trend line, which I think is still the target, right? So if you look at the this here, right? Like I said, the, the main thing here, guys, is we're still waiting for this volume, right? Which is literally coming because this looks like a wedge finish right there. So the volume is coming, guys. So most likely, high probability, it's going to correlate with this us going up, right? That's something we could just conclude here. And this still looks like a bullish pattern, right? And as we are leaning on massive support right there, right, guys? So that's it. I think I have this up too. So I'm looking into Bitcoin, some of these other metrics. This is a two year multiplier, which is hovering at 165K. This is 200 week moving average. It doesn't really matter. Where is this? I actually might as well keep an eye on it. 70K. Yes. That's the price. Two week multiplier is at 35K. Okay. It's and then the, the Pua, Puel multiple has dropped a lot here, right? Now, if this is a uh, mid bull market, then it's a very bullish signal, right? Because then it looks something like this area right here. Right, so the question is right now, it looks kind of similar to this point right here, right? Like this move right here, right? Where we had a drop like that. Mid bull market, we didn't really drop. Very, it looks very similar actually, guys, to this point right there, right? You guys can see that, right? So this little area right here, something similar to. Yeah, I can see why a lot of people are saying this cycle looks similar to this point. I'm just wondering if we don't get like something tricky and just get like a wedge finish like that, right? <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting. So this is, looks bullish. It looks like we're in a mid bull market emerging bull market this is a stock to flow model you know the question is this kind of still looks like 2017 right but potentially this is just a very different cycle we had last time so this is a pi cycle top indicator you know the top point is at like 90k now and we just tagged the bottom uh, moving average for the pi cycle top it's getting close like this point here, are we going to get another run up like 2017? That's kind of look what it would look similar to, right? So let's see if we repeat 2017. Golden ratio multiplier, it's the top red line is at 89K. Profitable days. Um, this is the rainbow price chart. This top colored area. It's well, well above 100k, right? One year hold a wave. This chart looks pretty telling. See these, I think bottom indicators are, or this type, I like these types of indicator, on chain indicators, where we could drop these trend lines like that. I mean, that looks like a wedge finish, right? We are getting kind of close to this bottom trend line. So it kind of looks similar to like this point here and this point here. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So we're in a, you know, we're in a tricky spot, guys. Question right now is still if we have another leg or is that high volume move going to correlate with us dropping, right? I still think we go, we're going up. Look at the MVRV score. This thing, the top point here still looks like it has a lot, a lot of room to go up. Right, the hold all wave. You know, is it gonna bend over like this? Like that, top trend line. Looks kind of like a wedge, top trend line, wedge. Like that. We're at the top trend line here, right? Which is kind of close to a top indicator as well so there's some mixed in signals right here guys I could see why some people are saying the top is in because some of these you know on-chain indicators do show that we're getting close to some kind of top right um, NUPL this thing looks like it could go a little bit higher so this is what I'm saying it looks like we're kind of close 
to some kind of top, and I still think that we have one more leg up, right? As we get our all season. Active address, centimeter, indicator. Alright, so that's pretty much everything. You know, there's a lot of different perspectives here. It looks like this thing is kind of bouncing here. Um, it's kind of interesting. So we look at the Bitcoin dominance. Like I said, for my, my account here, I thought that, uh, you know, we we're going to bend over here, right? And we have our alt season. We kind of want Bitcoin price to go up as all alt, alt season is happening, though, right? It's kind of what we're waiting on. Um, B, C, D, E. This did put up a lower low point here. And we're kind of in this area where I think is the top for the Bitcoin dominance still, guys. Let's look at the two days. So it is kind of respecting that top trend line, right? You know, we broke out of multiple trend lines here. And now we are back testing, you know, this stacked 6.8 and trend line resistance area right here. So is this it, right? Is the squeeze tight and we are at the top of the range? as well so it looks like the bitcoin dominance is about to bend over like i said we will kind of want the price to go up as well while that's happening right so if you look at the monthly rsi this definitely to me looks like a distribution pattern guys um you know you could you could draw it a little better on something like three week right or the squeeze is really tight and that's like a wedge right here we fell out of multiple trend lines and we are at all this resistance so a lot of things are pointing towards us going down you know, the volume is kind of important that this move up. We kind of want to see decreasing volume, but it's at like a medium point. So, uh, still think alt season is going to happen soon. Doge over total. Yeah, I'm extremely bullish on Doge, guys. If you saw my tweets, I do think, you know, it is possible that Dogecoin is going to flip Bitcoin's market cap at the end of this cycle, guys. I know that sounds crazy. But just, you know, based on things I'm looking at, right? So if you look at the volume here for uh, Doge, it's completely bottomed on this corrective pattern here, which is kind of like a wedge, right? Completely bottomed here, you know, while we were in this downtrend point right here. It just doesn't make any sense. The volume starts increasing for us to go down. That would be an insane drop, guys. It just doesn't make any sense from where we're at right now very high likely that we go up from here right especially as you look at multiple indicators that are lining up with this volume starting to increase right so two day is in my opinion is pretty telling where we had a double cross up like here it was a squeeze was tight one cross up here squeeze was tight and both these things happened on you know very low volume as we finally ran out now we're getting probably going to get a double cross up here right as the volume starts to increase so Things look pretty bullish to me, guys. This is uh, Doge over BTC. This is a uh, mass sport. The wedge finish here. Break, break. And we're getting another wedge thing here. So it looks like Doge is probably going to outperform. You know, BTC and total looks like pretty bottomed as well on the two day. Look real quick on the weekly. Still that massive support here. I'm very, very bullish on Dogecoin, guys, based on everything I'm looking at. And Pep over Doge, of course, this looks like a wedge finish, right? A, B, C, D, and then we're, it looks like we're going for this final tip, right? And if you look at this pattern right here, that looks like a distribution pattern, guys. Um, so, yeah, I do think that Doge is about to rip, guys. Um, so I hope you guys are ready. That's my call right now, and I, I did make a post about it on... Uh, on Twitter, right? So I'm going to show you guys real quick that post and then I'm probably going to end the video. Hopefully this thing is still recording. You know, I made this uh, post right here. It didn't get many, uh, it didn't get many, uh, you know, f uh, views or anything yet. But, you know, Dogecoin is on track for Bitcoin's market cap. And that's what I think, guys. And I, and I put it up on this trading view chart, right? So if you click the trading view chart, um, here it is, right? You could play it. That's uh, that's my call. We'll see if this checks out. If you want to keep track of this or bookmark it, I think it's going to be kind of fun. 
But I do think that uh, Dogecoin is going to flip eventually or get to Bitcoin's market cap. And I think it's going to be very crazy, guys. So just a quick update on my thoughts for the market right now. It still looks like we are falling. It's a pretty interesting video. Is this uh, ABC down? Or like some kind of very tricky like 1-2? Um, you know, I still think we're just uh, waiting for this volume, which looks like it's about to invert. So let's see what happens, guys. Thanks for watching.